The first thing I have to tell you Andres, is something that is philosophical. Livestock philosophical, I work with the essence of the animals. I work with the essence of the gyre and Guzarat. I do not believe in artificiality, because artificiality is not transmissible and in essence you have to work with feeding. It is something very important, you can have very good genetics but if you do not feed, the genetics is not expressed, you have to feed well and feed well with a principle that is natural in the grain, which is the grass, the meadow, that was the first thing that the animal consumed, the concentrate came to see it was, who knows in what century and in what conditions, the concentrate came to see it, who knows in what century and in what conditions, first the shepherd and secondly, it helps with things nowadays, which is the corn silo that we produce here on the farm and we also help with forage. With the same grass, but with edified grass, we grind it and we also give it. In the canoe at the time of milking the animal, and that is basically the feed, suddenly high production cows we help them with a specialized concentrate to make them produce more milk and looking at the costs, costs, benefits because look what a kilo of concentrate is going to be worth more than a thousand pesos and in many parts and I would say that most of the Colombian region's milk does not even reach a liter of a thousand pesos. Then I have a daughter who tells me colloquially and empirically she says to me, Dad where a kilo of concentrate is worth more than a liter of milk, give liter of milk do not give the concentrate because milk is a concentrate 1A and if the concentrate is worth more than the liter of milk then give milk. Well then, feeding is basic, yes, no genetics is expressed if there is no good feeding. And in the region here in Kambao, the whole Tekendama depression towards the Magdalena River, in front of Armoro, it is a very dry territory where cactus is produced and one sees cactus everywhere, so one has to look for a plant that is similar to cactus and that the cattle can consume it and we have found Nepal in the conditions, although we are doing cost studies. One sees it in many food productions in the pharmaceutical industry, but we are looking to see what is the cost of a kilo of Nepal. Because one bites it, the calves that are in the barn, in milking that suckle the cows, the cows that give milk to sell or for meat consumption devour the Nepal. The same in adult cattle, they devour the Nepal. But so far I do not know how much is costing me a kilo of Nepal. But logically we are working on that, right? The only thing we do know is that there are two products, Nepal and aloe vera. And they grow in these wild lands. They are born and they are lands where the fluvial precipitation per year does not exceed 500 millimeters. They are very dry but they grow there because they need very little water to feed themselves. We are in the plan. These are territories that have been very influenced by the Colombian guerrillas and by all kinds of violent organizations. People abandon these lands and go to Ebay, Honda, Bogota because as there is so little water they get bored and leave. Workers are very scarce, the climatic conditions. It is in a dry territory, very hot but dry, that is an advantage because it is very dry. I have 20 years of wire fences and the wire is in good condition, it does not get mold, it does. Not rust because there is no humidity, it is a very good land and it is an extension, which is.
There is a lot of opportunity to exploit them now because the national government made a very good, paved, very wide road between Porta Bogota, in front of Honda and here are thought. So it covers a great part of that barren territory. And that is. Helping many things to get people excited, extracting water from the subsoil, bringing water from the Magdalena River, planting alpaca, planting nopal, planting aloe vera, medicinal cannabis, and it is an area with a great future for tourism. With a great future then, we are doing that. We are contributing to train people so that they do not emigrate. So that they do not leave and find ways to feed themselves cheaply and feed their cattle cheaply. So that they are not deserting so horribly because then all those territories are left alone. I have experience with the cross-breeding of Guzerat with grey and black-white. That is something extraordinary, the size, the volume, the quality of the meat, the quality of the milk. How good the females are for recipients of this cross-breeding. And later we were implementing works with hosting with brown Swiss. With Jersey. We bought making crosses and we have found them very good. It is the Guzerat crossed with husky that is spectacular and I mean when a husky bull is used with a Guzerat cow. All those heifers are the best, bigger, prettier, more beautiful, more slender. If they are milk producers equal to the Girolanda, the F1 crossbreeding, Girolandas and Guzolando are almost equal, in the amount of milk they give, there is a very particular and very widespread difference. It is the Dairy Gyre Zebu and the Zebu is the Dairy Guzerat. The pure Dairy Gyre is more productive than the pure Dairy Guzerat. But already in the crossbreeding with Holstein, for example, or with the Brown Swiss, then they start to give the same milk, here there are Guzerat with brown Swiss of 15, 18 liters in the first calving plus what the calf takes. For that I have used all the pure Swiss browns that logically it is a luck to find. It is a luck and a job to find a brown Swiss bull that transmits milk. But that is not so easy. It is not like the Holstein that any Holstein bull transmits milk. In calving it is not like that, but when you find a good brown Swiss bull that transmits milk, you have to keep on this way because what great animals they are. And the Holstein, the Guzerat crossed with cemental, naturally cemental Breivik, the German, not the American cemental because the American cemental is for meat. It is not the same, although they are slender animals, they are not for milk. They are for meat, the Zebu has a very important study that I don't know why it is not disclosed more. The cattle with the highest carcass yield were the crosses of Guzerat with the cemental or with another, a European breed, that had an extraordinary yield, it beat them all, the cross breeding of Guzerat with a European cattle, which I think is with the cemental, gave us carcass yields that were much higher than any other. These studies were carried out by Aso Cebu and lasted for years. This is not just any small town research, no, this is a thorough research, well done by Aso Cebu. The work went well, but I really stopped doing it because I had a mission and a priority which was to spread the Guzerat and the Jayapurs. so I could not get distracted in so much crossing because there was a priority which was to introduce the Jire and Guzerat breed in the country.
The Gyre and the Dairy Guzerat Primitive Zebu breeds Like all Zebu breeds, are very good to withstand the heat, the sun, to eat under conditions of extreme heat. But in any case we have to think about one thing. Every living being has to look for the comfort zone. The cattle, however hardy they are, however rustic they are, have to be kept in a comfort zone that is very easy to form. I have a phrase that a veterinarian taught me many years ago when we were talking about elements and mind. Colleagues say that shade is another element. But I say and I reply that shade is another food. So no matter how hardy the cattle are and how hardy they are in the torrid zone, in the heat, even in the famine, they have to be kept in the comfort zone. We have to think that they give more if they have comfort zones. We have to provide them, we have to have shade in the pastures. We have to have good water for them to drink, to be safe. Whether they are Toros or European, we have to have comfort. Zones because the rest does not produce. And the purebreds endure more than the crossbreeding. Because when we talk about crossbreeding we can be talking about 50% of European Toros. This crossbreeding is done precisely to adapt some European cattle to the tropic and they adapt or acclimatize with the crossbreeding. Crossing them with Zebu and half. But the pure Zebu behaves very well in those long summers. They get thinner. Logically the milk production decreases, the meat production decreases. That is normal or they do not die, but the European cattle do die. Guzerat is the most complete bovine breed in the world and that is my passion. My beautiful woman, my soul's woman is her, Guzerat. That animal, that is truly the animal that serves everyone. Gives meat, gives milk. Serves for work. Adorns the farms with panache, with its slender head. With that grace it has. It raises its head like a queen and looks at the horizon. It looks at the horizon by raising its head. As its gaze is so oblique it has to raise its head quite a lot to see the horizon, so. It is very proud, very beautiful. That is a great animal and as I was saying before, it is the bovine breed that has contributed the most in the formation of compounds, it maintains a great percentage of Guzerat blood. People forget and even Brahmanists and many Brahmanists do not know it. Perhaps one has to talk with Fabio Jaramillo to live the history of the Brahman and read a lot to know about this excellent animal that has Guzerat blood because there is the famous aristocratic bull in it. It came to Mexico from Brazil in an import of cattle and during the revolution of Pancho Villa, the aristocratic bull, a Guzerat, went to Texas and that is where nothing less than the most prestigious Brahmin breed, the most prestigious lineage, the Brahmin that is the Amanso line, started, the Guzerat is involved in everything in there, from that line from that famous aristocratic bull, that served a lot of females in Texas. Later we began to see a bloodline that here in Colombia has been exploited a lot, which is the double A, a cow of meat milk, very good for the poor, the double A cow, very good for the poor, the cow of two, three liters of milk out of what the calf takes, 
that enriched the coastal and Huilenses and the Ptolemenses to Volunos. To almost all the country, the Guzerat. You find it everywhere, everywhere, and that is a guarantee of everything, of strength. You find the Guzerat eating at noon, in the sun. No other breed at that time is in the comfort zone, the Guzerat is. Still eating in the pasture, more resistant to diseases, bigger for discarding, better milk quality. Well, a lot of advantages over other breeds, but... Here in the country in Colombia we have to concentrate in what we already know and what is good and in what we have good, believe in what we have done, if we do not believe in what we have done then we are screwed. It is better to work because what for? If we are thinking that someone is doing better than us, we are already complexed. We are minimized, no. Here we have very good genetics to work with in Colombia, in Jair in Guzerat, in Brahman, in Holstein, in Normandy. We have the biggest Normandy herd in the world. More than the French, here we have very good things that people know how to work with. The government has something to implement, to perfect. So that what is happening at the moment does not happen. Such strikes, such problems do. To state negligence, because people govern from a desk and without knowing, for example, the countryside. Every year when it is necessary to cut the budget, the first budget that the government cuts is that of the Ministry of Agriculture, it is the first ministry with cuts. They do not think about it, the countryside is forgotten. In the countryside we have to improve the penetration roads, the tertiary roads and we have to improve communication, there we have to produce electronic payrolls, everything in the banking system is electronic. Now we have, everything is electronic. They are also going to force us to make the guys electronically. No sir, we are not in conditions. There is no signal, right here. Before signing the program you see that you have to dial three for times for a single telephone conversation and we are here five hours away from Bogota, in the middle Magdalena, where there is a little bit better signal than other parts but most of the country has no connection. And just as we are going to force here, hear the government to use a colloquial saying, well peasants in a chair without bringing the clothes, they are going to put us to make the electronic payroll. How do you think to tell a worker that he has to open a savings account to collect his monthly salary very small? That is an absurdity. That we have not yet prepared that peasant to this transition. To go from receiving a 10, 20, 30, abundant bill. To going to work with a check or an account. And now, a savings book or a checking account, even worse. This is the cattle raising that can bring us very good boxes. Because it is the best quality protein feed and that can get us all out of the backwardness. Look now, 27, 28 days of national strike with all the problems and the countryside has stood up for Colombia. In the pandemic, already a year and a bit of pandemic and the countryside has stood up for Colombia. Not the industry, the countryside. The food. So that is what the government has to do and that is what we have to concentrate on.
like that is what I recommend to all my colleagues in the countryside to work for the country by producing, producing in the countryside. That is what we are doing in Kambao or in the Quirikura farm. It is something that will help the whole countryside and the barren countryside. The areas with less soil quality, with less rainfall. In the region of Kambao the poor people take a nopal racket because there is wild nopal in the region. They roast it and spread butter on it and it is lunch with a lemonade with a glass of water or a glass of milk or a soda. That is lunch and as I have already told you that it has 18.4% protein. How many concentrates have 18% protein? Many Colombians made a tremendous effort in the 80s, Even in the 60s, the Livestock Fund of Antioquia, the Livestock Fund of Caldas, guys like Brand Londano, like Mr. Rojas from Pereira, Flor Botero from Ansermanuevo, many people, and we, already in 91, made great efforts to bring something good to the market. We made great efforts to bring something good from other regions of the world. We have done it, we have proved that we are capable because we produce very good products, but we have to work with that, continue implementing that exploitation, not letting ourselves be influenced by what is foreign, by what is foreign, because then we will never know what we are capable of or what we were capable of.